I want you to think of one group of people you think doesn't get enough respect for what they do. I imagine teachers. When I was in first grade, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I asked my teacher how I could become a vet, and she said that she didn't know, but she thought I should go for it. In second grade, I wanted to be an explorer. My teacher said I had the curiosity to discover all kinds of things. In third grade, I wanted to be an astronomer. Again, I told my teacher and she told me to reach for the stars, both literally and figuratively. In fourth grade, I wanted to be a clothes designer. My teacher told me I had the creativity to succeed. In fifth grade, I wanted to be a dolphin trainer. My teacher said I had the ambition to accomplish it. In sixth grade, I wanted to be an author. I even started writing a book. It didn't work out very well. Yet my teacher said she thought it was a great idea. Then in seventh grade, I realized something. Through all those crazy, irrational phases, my teachers had encouraged me, supported me, and motivated me, even though there was no way I was actually going to succeed. They believed that I could do anything I put my mind to. Then I realized I encouraged everyone to follow their passions, no matter how ridiculous the feat. That's when I decided I wanted to be a teacher. Teachers aren't recognized as heroes, but they are. They're the heroes of the future. They change kids' lives in more ways than anyone can imagine. I should know as I live with two of them. They teach students, encourage students, and protect students. Mr. Labrescu, a Virginia Tech professor, locked the door to his classroom so his students could escape the bullets of a school shooter who was on a rampage that would leave 32 students and faculty members dead. In doing so, Mr. Labrescu gave his life. During another school shooting, two teachers, Virginia Lee Soto and Anne Mary Murphy, turned themselves into human shields to protect their young students after the shooter invaded their classrooms and cruelly opened fire. Principal Dawn Husbunk reacted like a lioness protecting her cubs. She ran out of the office and lunged at the shooter, who died when he trained his gun on her and opened fire. When I was researching these shootings, I searched teacher sacrifice for students, and I got 39,800,000 results. Even though those shootings are very rare in extreme circumstances, there are small sacrifices made by teachers every day. They give their time, money, and worry to help their students have the best experience possible. By giving teachers respect for their actions and persistence, we could save them a lot of headache and time. Teachers willingly put themselves in a room filled with children six and a half hours a day. Those of you who are parents know how much of a handful one child can be. Teachers work with up to 50 kids at a time all day long. Sure, they get paid for it, but not very much. By the time you figure in all the migraine medicine they have to buy, they're losing more money than they're making. The average runner back in the NFL makes $1,792,000 per season. An average teacher makes 55000 per year. That's 3% of the running back's income. Some of you might not think much of all these numbers and percentages. It's just money, right? Plus, none of this even affects you. Well, what if I told you that if students and parents respected teachers, the world's IQ would increase drastically? Here's a classroom without respect. Here's a classroom with respect. I'm not saying that all students are bad. In fact, most kids are great young minds waiting to be molded into amazing things. However, one kid can sidetrack an entire classroom in a matter of seconds. If students never interrupted their teachers, kids could spend that time learning. We could have first grade kids learning algebra. Okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you get the idea. Now another problem arises. What about kids who can't learn at a quick pace? My simple solution will solve that problem as well. We've all heard stories about misbehaving kids and how the teachers had to prevent a tragedy. Or perhaps some of you are or were the misbehaving kids. Either way, teaching jobs have earned a rather horrible reputation. But if suddenly teachers didn't have to break up fights and deal with disobedient, obnoxious, disrespectful children and they only had to teach and enjoy watching students learn, there would be more people open to considering a teaching job. 
The new teachers could take kids who were behind and tutor them privately or in small groups. Teachers don't get the respect they deserve. However, they get plenty of disrespect. They often disrespected by students in their classroom. Not to mention parents and other staff members and even certain politicians. From simple calling names to causing physical harm, teachers are harassed either individually or as a group nonstop. The truth is, I have no idea what job I'll end up getting. Recently, I've been considering becoming a dermatologist, but I know that my teachers, teachers like my mom, teachers like my dad, teachers like the absolutely amazing woman who sponsored this club, they'll be with me every step of the way. Thank you for watching.